Well, uh, it's the Sunday after Easter. Uh, uh, the blessings of Easter this year were so many uh, online. I uh, hope that you were able to enjoy that uh, wonderful uh, the, the music and the message uh, and just that epic story of Jesus, that it's the one and true and only truly epic story, better than Tarzan. No, I'm not going to do it. Uh, better than all the other wonderful epic stories that we enjoy. I mean, I enjoy Star Wars, the Lord of the Rings, the, the, the Avengers, all those, Frozen. I mean, I've seen it many times with the grandchildren, so just love all that. And then the weather, oh my goodness, what a blessed Easter we had. Uh, if we would have known that kind of weather, we could have had an outdoor safe service, uh, maybe even a sunrise for that Easter Sunday. Uh, but again, just thankful that, that God gave us all that uh, blessings. And that's what we're going to be talking about for these next five weeks is going to be uh, BLESS. It's an acronym and we'll get to that uh, a little bit uh, later. But as we uh, are here on the Sunday after Easter, uh, this epic story that we continue to live in, let's do the Epic Apostles' Creed because it talks about God the Father, the Lord Jesus, risen in the Holy Spirit. So together uh, with, uh, on this Sunday after Easter, let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let's do it in an epic way. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. And he ascended into heaven. It sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let's pray the Lord's Prayer, the epic Lord's Prayer. We pray, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever Amen. And now let's sing as we are together following Jesus long, as we sing the one real and true epic Easter story, death was arrested. And so we can be free in Jesus, God's epic blessings. Hello. Thanks for joining us. As we celebrate this first Sunday after Easter, I want to sing, death was arrested because Jesus is alive. You think about death being put on trial and Jesus justifying us. Man, what a hope. Let's worship. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope and no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested and my life began. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. And my orphan heart was given a name my morning grew quiet my feet rose to dance when death was arrested and my life began oh your grace so free washes over my 
shame I'm a prisoner no more My shame was a ransom He faithfully bore He canceled my debt And he called me his friend When death was arrested And my life began Let's sing out together Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You Savior displayed on a criminal's cross Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost But then Jesus arose without freedom in hand That's when death was arrested and my life began It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new, now life begins with you. Oh, we're free, free, forever we're free. Come join the song of all the Yes, we're free, free forever, amen. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, we're free, free forever, we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever, amen. When death was arrested in my life when death was arrested and my life began that's when death was arrested and my life began all creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, Alleluia, Alleluia, thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam. their creator bless and worship him in humbleness oh praise him alleluia praise praise the father praise the son and praise the spirit three in one Oh, praise Him. Alleluia.
So God's blessings, uh, and oftentimes when I'm teaching about uh, God and I use the possessive apostrophe as God's blessings, I uh, want us to think about how it is God's, it's his, it's his to give to us, God's blessings. At times when we teach about God's kingdom, uh, it's God's kingdom that is coming to us as we pray in the Lord's uh, prayer. When we think about God's church, that capital C church, it's God's church. And we know that people can mess it up, that people can do all kinds of crazy things to God's church, but it's still his church. So today, as we start thinking about God's blessings, that he's always giving us his blessings, it's up for us, how can we uh, maybe recognize those blessings, receive those blessings, pass on those blessings, is what we're going to be thinking about, God's blessings. And there's never a day, there is never a day that God's blessings are not with us, holding us more than we uh, can even imagine. God's holding us each and every, never a day, never a day, where we're not being held in God's blessings, uh, his, his hands. And God's got this long blessing story. The, the, the story of God's blessings have been with us as people of God for, for generations upon generations, for millennia, and that's what we want to look at as we enter into this uh, uh, message today. So it goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 12, where God promises blessings to the person that we know as Abraham. And here's the blessings, God's word, God speaking his promise, God blessing Abraham, God blessing the world through Abraham. And so Genesis 12, verses 2 and 3, we read these words. God's words, God's words. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. In those two verses, God five times speaks the word bless, bless. So again, it's God's blessing, and it's never a day. But when we think about asking this question, how long? How, how long? Uh, so we're going back to this, this, this uh, uh, Bible promise, God's blessing of promise to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, goes back about 4,000 years. And so as we are, are, are uh, receiving God's blessings today, in 2021, after 2020, after um, all the things that, uh, that have happened since, since then, all the things that are happening now, the ramifications that are going to continue, we keep living in a broken world, but we are living with God's blessings, and there's never a day that God's blessings aren't with us in this broken world. So this question for us, what about when we don't feel blessed and there are chapters of our story that seem cursed, not blessed? Well, that's where we have to have this faith that is long, that even when we don't feel like we're being blessed, 
Even when maybe we feel that we're getting more of God's curse than his blessings, that his blessings are actually there. So we know that when God promises to Abraham back in Genesis 12, chapter 12, that um, it's a huge promise. I mean, Abraham is one individual that will have one life, but here we are all these thousands of years later, and all those promises have come true. So we know that it was a long time that Abraham, and Abraham never saw all the, the promises of God's blessings come true in his lifetime. We're seeing them. We know that Abraham's name is great. It's known all around the world. It's, known, it's, it's a, a, a larger name. The name of Abraham is a larger name than any other living person today. Even when a person today that's living is known all around the world, that it's a short knowing. There was a period where that person's name wasn't known. Maybe it's known now all around the world. And there will be a time when it won't be remembered a uh, hundred years from now. So you can think of any kind of name and just know that that name wasn't existing a number of uh, hundred years ago. Won't be, that person won't be in existence a hundred years from now. And will anybody remember? But the name Abraham, wherever God's people gather in one of God's churches, all around this globe for these last 2,000 years and even more, the name Abraham. So it's a great name by the promise of God. In the book of Romans, a couple thousand years after the blessings and the promised blessings that God gave to Abraham in Genesis 12, after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus, after the apostle Paul becomes a follower of Jesus after at first persecuting the followers of Jesus, but then he becomes a persecuted follower of Jesus. He writes in the book of Romans about Abraham. And it's very, very telling of how Paul writes about Abraham, how he as all the promises of God have come true. And even as Abraham is pointing to all, as Paul is pointing to God blessing Abraham with all the promises, there's also a challenge, in, there's a tension as Paul writes. So in Romans chapter 4, we read this, it begins with these three words, against all hope. Those words don't sound like a blessing, do they? Against all hope. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that. God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness for us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. And that's what we were celebrating last Sunday. That's what we're going to celebrate this Sunday. That's what we're going to celebrate every Sunday. That's what we're going to celebrate every day. Never a day, never a day, never a day, never a day without celebrating Jesus, our Lord, raised from the dead. And in the, verse 25, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification so that we might know the blessings of God, that we might know God's blessings. So we know, as we were saying last week, this is the one Jesus, is the one real and true epic blessed story. We know that we are blessed through Jesus even when he took on the curse of our sins and died upon the cross and was buried in that tomb. But we know that third day, that third day, as we confess in the words of the Apostles' Creed, it's the one real and true epic blessed story. And that's God's blessings 
in the story of Jesus. So there is never a day without the story of Jesus that is God's blessings story for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's God's blessings for the whole world. So it's God's long blessing story. Again, when we consider the words of uh, um, Genesis chapter 12, we can ask these three questions. Did God's promise to bless Abraham come true? Yes. All of those have come true, and they're still coming true. But how does that apply to us then? Will God's promise to bless us come true? Well, if God's promise to bless Abraham came true, will God's promise to bless us also not come true? And that and not only is that in a future tense, but let's ask this. Is God's promise to bless us true today? In these moments, as we worship our Lord Jesus, our one and true and epic story of our risen Lord Jesus, God's blessings are true for each one of us. Let's ask uh, these two questions questions. What's our definition of bless? What's God's definition of bless? Let's go to a story that Jesus tells and see if uh, we can answer these two questions. So in Matthew 21, Jesus tells this parable. He starts off with a question. What do you think? What do you think? So again, let's uh, answer that question. Let's uh, play along with Jesus as he a- asked that question to us. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. That's a blessing, two sons. He went to the first one and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. And, you know, a very common request. It's not an unexpected request that a father who owns a vineyard, has got two sons. Uh, again, probably talking about a teenage son at this point. The son would go and work today in the vineyard. And the son answers, I will not. But later, he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. And that second son said, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? And they answered, And we would answer with them the first. So we see the two sons, God's blessings, the father's blessings, are there for both sons. Both sons came to life through their father's blessings. Both sons are being blessed by their father as they have a place to live, as they have shelter, as they have food, as they have clothes, as they have love. The Father's blessings are all over these two sons. One son says, no, I won't go. That's not a good thing. But later changes his mind and goes and does what the Father asked. And we we know that there's going to be more blessings for that son. The other son says, No, the other son says, yes, I'll go, Father. Yes, Father, I'll go. But then doesn't go. We know that there's going to be a reckoning with that second son at some point. So when we think about how, how does God define blessing and how do we define blessing, well, there might be a difference. And then Jesus goes on in takes this parable that he tells and says some very, very hard and challenging things so that we don't miss the blessing of God because of how we define the blessing that we want for ourselves. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to show you came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. 
So Jesus is saying that these religious people who think that they're blessed are going to miss the blessing of God unless they turn. While those people that we would think that are, are not in the blessings of God, they turn and they receive the blessings of God. So how God's blessings turn us. That's what we want to think about. How God's blessings turn us. Again, the first son said, I will not, he answered, but later he changed his mind and went. Why? It's because he knew that the father was already a blessing father and that the father's blessings would continue as he followed and did what the father would have him to do. So that son, even though it was a difficult moment when he changed in turn well there was more of the father's blessings already there for him and then how god's long blessing story turns us how god's long blessing story turns us i don't know if it's true for you but i know it's true for me and i think it might also be true for you more than once in my life i thought i knew what the blessings of god were for me and so I was taking them, but then I, but they were the blessings of the world, the blessings of what I wanted, and I realized that I needed to turn and that God was there to bless me again, not to curse me because of the wrong things I had done, but he was there to bless me when he graciously turned me to do what he wanted me to do in the first place. So when I look out and I see other people trying to get blessings for themselves, especially the blessings of this world for themselves and shutting others out and oftentimes shutting God out, instead of judging them, instead of cursing them, pray for them. Because I know that God has more than once turned me and I pray God's long blessing story will turn them too. So how can we live in God's long blessing story? Again, the blessing story starts um, even before Abraham, and it continues on and on and on. God's long blessing story. Again, you've heard the three words, uh, this three-word phrase before, that we are blessed to bless, blessed to bless. And that's really the promise that God gives to Abraham. He blesses Abraham, but the blessing to Abraham is to bless the whole world. And we're a part of that world now that we are blessed to bless. Again, a part of what I want us to think about as we go through these next five Sundays together in this series called Bless. And by the way, it's a book that we're uh, taking this from that I read and just thought, man, this is just really well uh, um, uh, teach well, and so uh, we're going to be looking at uh, what the bless means, the B-L-E-S-S, in just a moment. But a part of what we want to think about as we go through these five weeks, and that uh, is that when God uh, brings out his blessings, it's God's blessings, they flow out of heaven, flow from the, the, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, bounding in love and faithfulness to us, they, so they f- are flowing in us, so God's blessing is flowing in in, but God's blessings as they flow into us aren't just for us that we can kind of put them in a reservoir and keep them to ourselves. No, it's this idea that God's blessings then are flowing out. So God's blessings flow in and then they flow out. If they just flow in, it's got to get stagnant. And we see people at times that are stagnant in their faith. And so God's blessings flowing in, God's blessings flowing out, blessed to bless. In fact, one of the great Hymns of God's church, again, God's church, and one of God's great hymns is praise God from whom all blessings, that's right, flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. So the five letters of the word bless, B-L-E-S-S, we're going to look at these over these next five weeks. Again, today is day one. So the B is begin with prayer. So that's why we've been talking about prayer. How do we pray for others? How has others prayed for us? The L is listen. We'll be thinking about that next week. How do we listen to God and make sure that we are listening to him and that we turn and we repent 
like that first son did when he said, no, I won't go. But then he changed his mind and he went. We don't want to miss that turn. We don't want to miss listening to God and that we go out and do what God would have us do. That will bring a blessing to us. And then the E is for eat. We're going to have some fun with that in a few weeks, or a couple weeks from now. Uh, eat. And then the, the first S is serve. Again, we're blessed to serve. We're blessed to bless. We're served to serve. And then the S, and it's just that idea of a story. We all have a story. We all have a blessing story. And so we want to be able to share our story with one another. In the book, uh, when it comes to this idea of uh, begin with prayer, here's the big idea. To bless your neighbor, Jesus invites you to begin with prayer. To bless your neighbor, Jesus invites you to begin with prayer. Here's a quote from the book. I cannot change the world. You cannot change the world. Even prayer alone doesn't change the world. Only God can change the world. However, God uses prayer prayer to change us, and then God uses us to change the world. So we want to, over these next five weeks and beyond, and really many of us have started it way before this, to be praying long, bless prayers, praying long, bless prayers. We're going to begin with prayer, but we're going to listen to people. We want to eat with people so that we can serve them, so we can hear their story, and we can tell our story. So we want to pray. We want to be praying out for others to be in God's hands of blessings. Again, just to remind ourselves the hands of blessings, that, that God's hands of blessings are the nail scarred hands of Jesus. Those perfectly nail scarred, eternal hands of Jesus. Abraham was looking forward to being in those hands and being blessed by those hands. We look back to those hands. We look to those hands today that they are with us. We want to, people have been praying for us to be in those hands of blessings. We want to pray for other people to be in those hands of blessings. Because you never know how God may move us and how God will move who we pray for. So, there's a part of all of our stories, my story and your story, there's a part of all of our stories that we never know all the people that ended up praying blessing prayers for us. As I was preparing this message, I went back to one of my high school um, mentors. Uh, there was a man in our church by the name of Bob Teese, and he uh, would work, he would teach Sunday school to us on Sunday mornings to the high schoolers. Um, in between our worship services. So the, all the little kids were going to Sunday school. We were going to this uh, teen class. And I remember one Sunday um, that uh, I, I was probably up late on Saturday night like a teenager, you know, 16, 17-year-old. And Bob Teese was, um, this is back in the early 70s, and one of the things that had just come out in the early 70s was the Broadway musical Jesus Christ Superstar. And um, so he was playing some of the music because, again, it was kind of rock music and Jesus Christ Superstar and then all the other, you know, um, I won't, we won't take the time to review some of those songs that were on there. But um, he was just trying to help us to relate that Jesus wasn't out of touch. And I have to tell you, I remember because I was so tired that even as he was playing those um, the, the, the songs, trying to give us a sample of each of the songs and some of the messages behind them, uh, I was falling asleep. And at the end, um, my other classmates, you know, they were obviously having a good time with me falling asleep during this whole hour. And at the end, uh, Bob Tease kind of asked, you know, what did I get out of it? And just kind of had to say, not much. I'm sorry, I was tired. And he was very, very gracious to me. And I just know that he was praying for me. And so all those years ago, praying for me, never knowing how that, you know, kid that was falling asleep in his class would one day be a pastor. So I know there's all kinds of other people that, uh, that I know have prayed for me and all kinds of people that I don't know who have prayed for me. And I think the same is true for you. There have been all kinds of prayers of blessings that other people have play, prayed for us as a part of why we are in the hands of God's blessings. 
But then the other thing is that you, you, you never know how long some people are praying for other people, especially when it comes, I always think of this, when I think of moms who are praying. Again, I know of moms over the, all the years now that I've been a pastor, I have talked, I have had conversations with many mo- mothers who prayed for their children, their adult children, for a decade, for two decades, for three decades, for four decades, for five decades. They, or their hearts are oftentimes breaking. They brought their children up in the church. They brought them to Sunday school, brought, brought them to vacation Bible school, went through confirmation or some other kind of religious instruction. They, they, they showed how they were, they were praying to God. They were giving to God. They were serving God. They were trying to bless other people as they had been blessed. They wanted that for their children, for their adult children, for their grandchildren. And they just keep praying prayers of blessings. And those prayers... Many of those prayers are answered. And sometimes they probably aren't. But moms don't stop praying prayers of blessings for their adult children who are trying to go off in this world and kind of living more world, less Jesus, or sometimes their grandchildren, sometimes even adult grandchildren, again, kind of living that more world, less Jesus. But they keep praying. They keep praying prayers of blessings. Because you never know when God might answer that. We are going to be praying long, blessed prayers because we follow Jesus. Together we're following Jesus long. And we know that Jesus has a prayer that he keeps praying for all people, all of us and all people throughout the kind of the history of this world. We hear the prayer from the cross of Jesus. When we read these words of Jesus, this prayer that he prays while he's on the cross, it's not a one-time prayer. It's a prayer that's always vibrating. It's a prayer that's always reverberating. It's a prayer that we can still hear and be blessed by today. Jesus, from the cross, says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. He wasn't praying that just for the people there at the foot of the cross. He's praying it for me. He was praying it for you. He's praying it for all people. He knows we don't know what we're doing. He knows that sometimes we don't listen in turn. But he also knows that sometimes when we say no first, sometimes because we know that we have a good, good father, we turn and we change and we are following Jesus. So, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. I wish, as we come to a close today, I I wish that somehow technology existed for me to reach through the screen and give you a physical touch of blessing. But since we can't do that, would you just imagine with me God physically touching you? God giving you a safe physical touch of blessing. And uh, some of you will remember from our Good Friday worship, we kept uh, having you make the sign of the cross upon our forehead and upon our heart. If I was able to be with you, I would take a little bit of oil and safely make the sign of the cross upon your forehead, giving you a blessing, your name and God's name. We're going to put up on the screen kind of a prayer of blessing, God's Physical prayer of blessing for you. So up on the screen, you're going to see a blank. That's for your name. And then these words, you are warmly touched and blessed in the name of our Abba Father, our risen Lord Jesus, and the warm breaths of the Holy Spirit. So I just want to give you a couple of moments to go ahead and say these words out loud. Put your name in the blank. Take your finger, touch your forehead, and make the sign of the cross and say these words. Pray this prayer of blessing from God. God's prayer of blessing touch you. Please take a moment and do that now.
God's long blessing story for you. God's long blessing story for people that you love. God's long blessing story for you to pray a prayer of blessing for souls that matter to God. Your soul matters, and the ones you love, their souls matter. Pray long prayers of blessing that they would be in those wonderful nail-scarred hands of Jesus. Let's pray together to that end. So, Lord Jesus, from the cross, we still hear your prayer of blessing upon us and over us. Father, forgive them. for They do not know what they are doing. We know that we should go out and work when you ask us in the morning. And we say no. Then by your grace and by your mercy and by your history of blessings, we change our minds. and We go and do what you would have us to do. And even as we do it, more of your blessings pour out from you, pour into us. May those blessings not go stagnant in us, but may we pray them out for others. So Jesus, be with us as we continue to be blessed and as we continue to be blessed to bless. We ask and pray it in your name, Jesus. Amen. And now let's uh, end our worship celebration singing this epic song, Only Jesus. He's the only one who can turn graves into gardens. He's going to turn your grave into a garden. He's going to turn my grave into a garden. That is our epic Jesus, the one and true and only epic Jesus. I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along And put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is. shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn morning to dancing you give beauty for ashes you 
turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the Again, such an amazing song. Only Jesus can, only Jesus can, only Jesus can turn graves into gardens. So as we go out today, the hands of our Jesus are upon us. Those blessings, God's blessings, God's blessings, God's blessings, they come pouring from heaven into us because Christ in us, the hope of blessing back out.